We are in Makassar and this is one of the largest cities in Indonesia and the capital of South Sulawesi. Today this marine city is known for its culinary treasures. Meat, seafood and desserts, this place has it all. Welcome to Makassar. The best way to discover a country is through its food. Which is why I'm taking Toby and Darren on a gastronomic adventure of enough food spots all over wonderful Indonesia. So we can create new dishes inspired by local flavors. Getting to Makassar is easy. There are many direct flights from major cities in Indonesia and also direct flights from Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. During the 14th century, Makassar was a major port for merchants to trade valuables such as textiles, gold and silk for spices. Makassar was eventually conquered by the Dutch in 1667. They captured the city's iconic Fort Ujung Pandang, rebuilt it in Dutch style and renamed it Fort Rotterdam. Because of the Dutch stronghold here, the intertwining of culture is evident in terms of Makassar language, architecture and of course food. We're going to start our journey of Makassar by exploring the very essence of the Dutch presence here in this marine city right here in Fort Rotterdam. We're going to meet up with a very interesting man named Dodo the Pen Man who's going to show us both around. Dodo is an avid pen collector, having collected over 10,000 pens. His quirky personality, passion and extensive knowledge for his beloved city has made him a well sought after guide in Makassar. So Pak Dodo, what are the obvious Dutch traits here? If you come here, the main point that you want to see is the church. If we see from above, the shape of this area looks like a turtle crawling to the sea. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know turtle? I do not see That's why. <laughs> <laughs> turtle, of course. That's why the local That's people it. call here Benteng Panyua. That's local language Makassar. But in Indonesia or Malay, we call Penyu. Animal who can live on the land and also on the sea. She. Oh, sure. And also for the symbol, how the animal protect the enemy because they have a hard shell, yeah. The philosophy. The Dutch rebuilt the destroyed parts of the fort to include distinctive Dutch structure and architecture. But the most significant thing about this fort is that it was used to store spices before they were shipped to Europe. So I've heard there's a huge uh, spice trade here. Where oh, do they keep all the spices? They keep here in the building because Makassar is the main city at the time. Ah, so do you think that spice trade had a big influence on the cuisine here? Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Because as you know, when the traders they bring here, there are local ingredients. The Chinese, Arabic and India affect the local food in Makassar in here. Yes. Mel melting pot. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sounds like the Dutch really got a foot in this place. Well, Marinka, I hear the locals here have six meals a day. And when in Rome... Ha, I can see that you're up for the challenge, Darren. So, let's try meal number one, which is Choto Makasa. It's all about beef. I'm hooked and curious. Lead the way. OK, that way. People in Makassar are passionate about food, especially dishes that include fish and meat. Sulawesi food is fiery, and the variety they have here in Makassar is endless. So it's no wonder the locals here are known for eating up to six meals a day. But although Makassar is a seaport, one of the food staples here is beef. And if you haven't tried Choto Makassar, then you haven't experienced Makassar to its fullest. Choto Makassar is a famous local stew consisting of beef and innards such as liver, lung and tripe. And like this wonderful city, it too has a rich history. Some say Chota Makassa was influenced by Middle Eastern merchants, as evident in the use of spices. Others say it was the Chinese merchants who brought it in, since Chota Makassa is consumed with tochu, a famous ingredient in Chinese cuisine. Regardless of its origin, it is now a proud local favorite. We are going to the famous Warung Choto Nusantara, which has been around for 30 years to meet Ibu Haja. The locals claim that the Choto Makassar is best here because it's cooked over a wood stove. Di sini kan saya lihat ramai banget nih. Dalam satu hari bisa keluar berapa porsi itu? Kurang lebih 500 porsi. Busy. I know, right? And so is this dish difficult to cook and is it at all possible? Can you please show me how to cook it? Pertama, serai dan laos digoreng. Masukkan bawang putih. So what makes uh, Choto Makassar different is peanut sauce. Ah, okay. Masukkan bumbu-bumbunya, merica, ketumbar, dan santan. Oke, okay, selanjutnya apa ibu? Telur, campur air beras. Oh, oke. Okay. Yeah. To thicken the soup, she use whole eggs and rice water as a thickening agent. Ya, yeah. boleh aduk ya. 
Then in goes all the meat and you cook it for a good hour or so to get its rich and tasty broth. How oh, it smells. Delicious. I know. So now the best bit, the eating. Traditionally, you eat it with um, a little bit of this rice cake. Okay. We call it ketupat. I mean, there's some really quite strong flavours coming from, you know, you've got heart in there, liver, kidneys, and when cooked for a long time, they can be somewhat bitter, but I think because of that, you've got coconut and the peanut butter, and you've got all that sweetness that, that counteracts that, so it's actually a really well-balanced soup. Now I've got a taste of the famous Choto Makassar, I've got a couple of ideas for my very own cooking demonstration. Oh, really? Well, perhaps I can take you to an island to get more ideas for you. Uh, can't wait. Only seven kilometers away from the mainland is the beautiful tiny oval-shaped island called Samalona Island. There is a legend about its waters. It is believed that thousands of years ago, couple Datu Museng and Maipa Deapati were forbidden to be together in this life. So they sacrificed themselves in this very sea to be together for eternity. Today, people come to the island to relax and enjoy a barbecue. And because we're on a mission to eat like the locals, we too are going to take our daily catch and barbecue it right here on the beach. Wow, I could spend a long time here. Look at that beautiful blue water. It's gorgeous, isn't it? There's also good snorkeling around the corner, but we're here for meal number two. Ikan bakar, real fish. It consists of um, garlic, onions, oil, and turmeric. Smell that. Ikan bakar or grilled fish may not be unique to Samalona Island, but plucked from the sea and grilled to smoky, sweet flesh perfection, it's especially good here. Wow. Nice. It was perfect. I'm hungry now. Smell that. So am I. Let's eat. Depending on preference, the fish can also be prepared with some chilies, tomatoes, soy, sugar, or lime juice. As the sun sets in the horizon, I can see why the Dutch were so eager to get their hands on Makassar. It truly is paradise. Nothing like ending the day with a barbecue. Fresh seafood, fresh coconuts, and a magnificent view. You couldn't really ask for more. Makassar was a thriving seaport in the past where merchant vessels used to trade their goods for spice. But even before the Spanish, Portuguese or Dutch, the Makassar ethnic groups had already developed powerful kingdoms that encouraged trade and fishery. One cannot avoid coming to a seafood market when you're in a marine city like Makassar. This is the very popular Rajawali market. Fish is sold here around 6 or 7 in the morning and later at 3 in the afternoon. The catch varies from totak tuna, squid and terry to flying fish row. And because it all caters to smaller fishing boats, you sometimes get a better deal. And the catch of the day is bolo fish, or what we call usually as bandeng. And this is used a lot in a lot of Makassar dishes, especially ikan palumara, and it's very influenced by the Portuguese. Let me guess, this is our next stop for dish three? That's right. Palumara ikan is a dish native to Makassar and is prepared with garlic, shallots, lemongrass, the bulu fish, tamarind water, palm sugar, turmeric, and chili. So Darren, this is a very simple dish. A yellow fish broth with the fish that usually bulu fish. You can use mackerel as well to cook okay. this, but the locals said that this is the best using bulu fish. Let's taste it. Okay. Cool, it's quite um, viscous in consistency. It's, it's fairly mild. Really? Like, yeah, I think it's like nice and like it's not super spicy or like doesn't blow your head off, despite the fact there are whole chilies floating on top. But it's, it's quite deceiving. I think it's really quite mild. There's a lot of acid. It's kind of su yeah. a bit sour. I, mm -hmm. I quite like that. It's, it's really refreshing, especially in this heat. But it isn't at all. Oh, you have to try this too. Ah, okay. It's What's the Melinjo crackers. So these are from seeds that are pound until really flat and then deep fried. Really good. It's good, huh? Delicious. You like it? Mm. Okay. I can take you to this Pusat Ole Ole, which is a souvenir place at Sumba Opus Street. Okay. Yeah? First, we finish the soup. I came, I ate, I conquered. And that was dish number three. Only three more to go.
This is vibrant and bustling Somba Opu Street and you can get anything at this place. From food to handicraft to local Makassar souvenirs and even those from around Sulawesi. Over here you're exposed to the world and culture beyond Makassar City, one of which is the Toraja people. The Toraja people are one of four ethnic groups in Makassar. The word means people of the uplands. Tarajans are renowned for their elaborate funeral rites, burial sites carved into rocky cliffs, traditional peak roof houses known as Tonkanan and colourful wood carvings. And on the long Samba Opu Street, you can duck into any one of these many handcraft stores here and get a souvenir by the Taraja people, such as elaborate carvings, Taraja coffee and textiles. This looks very unique, what is it? It is, isn't it? It's Tonkanan House, native to Taraja people. You know there? Huh. How about you find me a souvenir that represents Makassar the most? And I will give you a surprise. Right, you're on. Marinka, a gift. Oh, okay. Carving of Georgia people. Very nice. And that's a surprise. A green banana. Yeah, it's Makassar specialty. Try it. It's not even right. Okay, I'll show you the real surprise. Another green banana? Ah, it's a very special kind of banana. I'm not entirely sure about this. Marinka spoke to me about the special green banana dish, and it turns out she was telling the truth. Pisang ijo, which literally means green banana, is one of Makassar's most iconic desserts. Sweet, aromatic, and filling. Pisang ijo can be found almost anywhere on the island. And to keep up with my mission of eating six meals a day like a local, Pisang Ijo is my dish number four. So there's obviously bananas here, steamed, and they're wrapped in this rice flour mixed with the pananus leaves. That's why it's green. And then syrup, like pink syrup, shaved ice, a little bit of condensed milk, and what makes it special is smooth rice porridge. Right, let's try it. Okay. Mm. A very, very refreshing dessert. Lots going on texturally. You've got the porridge, um, the crunch of the ice, the sugar syrup and the chew around that banana. Works really well. I really like the consistency of the pisang ijo. It's chewy and soft inside with the bananas, a little bit of sourness and the sweet and salty mix to it because the porridge is quite salty. There's coconut milk inside and the syrup is very sweet. So if you mix it, it's like a sweet and salty, very nice combination. A perfect dessert for a hot day and that shaved ice just takes it up a notch. Brilliant. Hmm, I think I might have a few ideas to tweak from the dessert for the cooking demo. With four dishes down, we're making a pit stop at Tuarco Toraja Coffee for a drink. Makassar locals love their coffee. And Toraja Coffee is the coffee to try while you are here. Tarako Toraja Coffee produces their own coffee and has a coffee plantation in Toraja, a six-hour drive for Makassar. They are one of the very few places in Makassar that serve Arabica coffee. And after seeing Taraja coffee being snatched up by tourists at Somba Opu Street earlier, I was curious to find out what the fuss was about. Taraja coffee is really famous. It's one of the best um, Indonesian coffee, actually. Right. Mm. Mine is cold brew, so it's very clean in terms of taste, very crispy, uh, a little bit acidic, but I like it. Beautiful. I actually normally like loads of milk and milk coffee, but this is a great way to enjoy, you know, like I like the cold pressed brews as well. They're kind of interesting. It's a cleaner representation like of the coffee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without milk, I'm getting all those nuances. Like there's a bit of, for this is a bit of caramel. It's very, very smooth. A um, little bit of vanilla. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Okay, I admit, that tasted pretty good and I can see why it's a big deal. But now it's time to hit the food trail again. So to hit our target of six meals in one day, we need to try two more dishes. Okay, we've tried Choto Makassar, Espisang Ijo, Grilled Fish, and Ken Palumara. I reckon we should try Sop Konro, which is beef rib soup. Can't wait, let's try it. Sop Konro is a beef rib soup. The soup is made from a mixture of various spices, especially coriander and kluwak, a fruit that gives the soup its dark color. These days, a new version with grilled ribs has been introduced called soup konro bakar. Looks nice, huh? Beautiful. This dish was made popular by a teacher back in the 60s, and then he started a warung, just a small one. Since then, it's taken off until right. now. It's very hearty. It is massive amounts of flavor. Really big, rich. Not much chili at all, but I see they serve it with, with sambal and lime. It, it's really going to need the lime because it's 
It's almost like the fat has been emulsified back into the broth, almost yes. like a beef version of a tonkatsu ramen. The meat is really tender, and you can taste all the spices. Well, that's a complete meal right there. Meat that just falls away from the bone, a really flavoursome stock. Beautiful dish. Wow, that was dish five. One more to go. In the evenings, Losari Beach is where the locals from all walks of life flock to watch the beautiful sunset over this majestic land. In old Javanese, Losari means the spirit of the earth, and it couldn't be more fitting for this place. Aside from the beautiful sunset here, the other attraction is a string of stalls that sell a tasty and popular traditional dessert, Pisang Epek. Pisang Epek is pressed banana, and it's typically served with palm sugar syrup and condensed milk. Variations exist too. You can have it with chocolate and even cheese. I'm having mine with chocolate, and Darren is taking the original. Wow, um, the, the chocolate Pisang Epek is very dense. It's a bit chewy as well, but I like the chocolate thing here because it's sour and there's a little bit of um, sweetness from the chocolate. I've got the original. Chewy bananas, palm sugar and a touch of condensed milk. Great way to finish six meals. I honestly didn't think I could match the Makasa way of life of having six meals a day, but we did it. In our short time here, we tried Choto Makasa, Ikan Baka, Palumara Ikan, Pisang Ijo, Soup Conro, and just then, Pisang Epe. Oh, wow. I honestly didn't think that we could accomplish six meals. I feel like a local now. Marinka, well done. Six meals in one day and I am stuffed. Tomorrow is our cooking demonstration in front of the local community and I cannot wait. In the meantime, let's finish these. Yeah. Dig in. Beautiful. So the day has arrived, we're here at the lovely On 20 bar and dining overlooking the stunning Makassar. And today we're joined by the local community who could share this experience with us. And the two dishes that we are going to remake are the Choto Makassar and Pisang Ijo. I'm taking on the local favourite dish, Choto Makassar. I'm going to simplify things somewhat by introducing beef stock and making a beautiful meatball. Making it relevant, tasty and accessible for the home cook. I'm going to change it into a tiny little piece of pisang ijo and also I'm going to add texture like jackfruit and sago pearls. Let's get cooking. Okay, let's start now. First, I'm going to blend the pandan leaves and the sweet okay. leaves. Great colour. Now, I'm going to ask you to cut it. Baby mm, banana. Baby bananas. Okay. I'm going to make the skin. Rice flour over here and a little bit of salt, sugar. Put this just little by little. Coconut milk. Suji is quite strong in terms of the colors. So you happy with the bananas, Jeffy? Perfect. So it's looking really silky smooth now. We're going to put the banana inside it. Uh, one baby green banana. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Very proud of you. It's on top. Right. We'll wait for about 15 minutes. Now we're going to make the rice porridge. Coconut milk, water, salt, sugar, a little bit of pandan leaves. Come up to the boil now. Add a little bit of rice flour now and make sure you whisk it. It's a bit salty. Lovely. Delicious. Let's check our pisang ijo. Okay, it's time to plate my dessert now. Look at that. <sighs> nice. Very pretty. Pisang ijo. Okay, so I am going to try to recreate Choto Makasa. First of all, meatballs. Some ground mince, drained in, oxtail. So I'm going to season it with salt, nutmeg, some white pepper, some of this coriander seeds, egg white, like this little guy. Okay. Vegetable oil, galangal. Lemongrass, minced garlic, spices, break that up. We've got coconut milk and egg. So I'm going to add these together. I'm just going to add this to our pan. Two more steps to go. First of all, rice water. Leave it to steep so the starch comes out, which will give our the soup a bit more body. Great. Give that a little stir. And then finally, beef stock in. Cook that down about four to five minutes. Whilst this is coming up to the boil, we're going to cook our meatballs. I'm now going to pop this stock onto our meatballs. Turn the heat off now. That's cooked enough. Plating time. A very, very simple garnish, but just something to give it a little bit of colour, a bit more heat and freshness. Lovely. OK, guys, come on up and have a taste. Perfect. Oh. 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 Oh
Now that we've shared our recipes, it's time for these lovely people to recreate our dishes. Okay, everybody ready? Yay! Three, two, one, let's go! The flavor of Makassar itself is actually the culture and the food. The flavor of Makassar is semuanya enak, manis, lain daripada yang lain. I do like the meatballs. They're great. Beautiful. Well done. Not quite as sweet. Beautiful textures though. I like the presentation of the banana. Delicious. Guys, great work. Give yourselves a big hand. Makassar has definitely given me an insight into how the Dutch and their trading counterparts have influenced the cuisine in the city. The variety of the cuisine here, the culture, the beautiful landscape found in and around Makassar makes this a city I definitely will return to. I will be back.